final warning that goes to the world before Christ comes back is Babylon has fallen, come out of her, my people. If any man worships the beast in his image, the wrath of God is poured out on that person. Then Jesus comes. It's a message that needs to go to the world, and I don't want anyone's blood on my hands, so I want to be faithful to give it to you straight, but lovingly. Pray for me that I can do it right. What are some of the points that we find when we look at all these passages in prophecy dealing with the beast? Well, it tells us that, first of all, it's among, comes up from among the ten powers. It has a human leader. There are ten points here. We're doing A through J. It uproots three. It's diverse or different from other powers. It's a persecuting power. It comes up after the fall of the Roman power in 8476. It rules for a time, time, the dividing of times, or 1260 years. It's guilty of blasphemy. It changes God's law, or attempts to. And it's identified as this little horn kingdom. It's a kingdom power. Now, question number 10. With all these 10 points that we just looked at, if you apply them to the papacy, does it fit? All right, one by one, let's look at them. And stay with me. I'm giving you a lot of information now. And I know that it's sometimes more entertaining for me to tell you little anecdotes and stories. But I want you to think, because this is so important. You owe it to yourself to tune in and listen to these quotes. A, does it fit the criteria of coming up among the ten powers of the Western Europe? When you consider the geography of Europe, was Rome in the midst of that? So when it comes up among Rome, does it fit that criteria? Let me hear you say yes if you think so. Yes. I mean, it's right in the middle there. It tells us in um, Revelation 12, the dragon is the devil working through pagan Rome. What power was it that was controlling the world in chapter 12 of Revelation that tried to destroy Jesus as a baby? It was the Roman power. So we know it comes up from there. It says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and his great authority. That means its seat of authority, its throne, so to speak, is handed over by Rome. Rome gives this beast power its position. Does the papacy or the Catholic Church fit that criteria? Look at what history says. We know that with the legalization of Christianity under the time of Constantine, and then Constantine not only legalized Christianity, he moved the headquarters of the empire to Constantinople, named it after himself, Istanbul. Here's what it says in Abbott's Roman history. The transfer of the emperor's residence to Constantinople was a sad blow to the prestige of Rome. And at that time, one might have predicted her speedy decline. But the development of the church and the growing authority of the bishop of Rome, or the pope, gave her a new lease on life and made her, meaning Rome, again the capital, but this time the religious capital of the civilized world. So, did the church receive its seat from the Roman Empire? It, does it fit that criteria? Talk to me here in Michigan, please. Yes. yes, okay. You all look real serious here. You're scaring me. It goes on to say that the, this beast power would receive its seat, its power, and authority from Rome. Not only were they given basically the very palaces that the emperor used to live in, but he then gave them an army, he gave them authority, and he said the church is not just a religious institution now, we're going to make you a political institution now. And they were basically handed all these things. The prophecy fits that perfectly. To the succession of the Caesars came the succession of the pontiff in Rome. When Constantine left Rome, he gave his seat to the pontiff. Right out of history. Sounds like it's right out of the Bible. All right, the next criteria. Issue B. We're looking at the evidence now. It says it would have a man, an individual, who would speak for it. There would be a man who had a, a mouth that would be the spokesman, a, a person at the head of the papacy. Would we all agree that the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church, has at one individual? If I ask you who's the head of the Catholic Church, what do you tell me? Is it a, a parliament? Is it a senate, a congress, or is it one person? It's the Pope. It says power was given him, Revelation 13, verse 7 over all kindreds and tongues and nations. I think everybody agrees that the Pope is the undisputed leader of the papacy. Does it fit that criteria? Yes. Listen to this quote. And by the way, the quotes I'm reading you, many of these, they're either from history or from the papacy's own writings. This is an example of the latter. We moreover proclaim, this is a declaration from a papal bull, and declare and pronounce that it is altogether necessary 
to salvation for every human being to be subject to the Roman pontiff. Do you catch that? It is necessary for salvation for every human being to subject to the Pope. That's the translation of that. So it meets, it meets that criteria of one individual at the head. Evidence C. Let's see if it fits this now. It would pluck up or up, uproot three other kingdoms while it comes into power. Oh, now we've got to go to history. The three Aryan kingdoms of the Vandals, the Heruli, and the Ostrogoths were overthrown between 493 and 538. And when the Roman church came into power and they were given military power, one of the first things they did was to subjugate these three kingdoms. The, you've heard of vandalism? You know where vandalism comes from? Because the Vandals, they were a Christian nation. They were Aryans. They did not believe in the Trinity, but they also were against idolatry. And as idolatry began to creep into the church, they would go and they would deface or break up the idols that the church was beginning to worship, and they called them Vandals. Vandalism. That's where the word comes from. They were destroyed. Have any of you ever met uh, someone from the Ostrogoths? Or the Heruli? You say, well, I've met some Vandals before, but no, they're not, they're not related to the Vandals back in the ancient kingdom. They were uprooted by the Roman power, by the papacy. So does it meet that criteria? Yes, it does. Evidence D, it says it's a diverse power from these other kingdoms. Instead of it just being a kingdom like Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, this is different because it's iron mixed with clay. It's different because the papacy is a kingdom where you can have dual citizenship. You might be from Argentina and be from the kingdom of the papacy at the same time by being a member of that church. You see what I'm saying? It's both religious and political. One billion members around the world. Do you think prophecy might touch on something that profound, that had so much power during the Dark Ages? Absolutely. It's in there, but it's just not politically correct if you say these things. Answer E. It would make war with and persecute the saints. We read that in the Bible, that it would wear out the saints of the Most High. It would be a persecuting power. Well, if you know your history at all, and when I went to school, it was still in the history books. I don't know if it's still there now. Anyone ever heard of the Inquisition? I think you could look it up and still find it if you go to an encyclopedia. But uh, there was tremendous persecution. As soon as you give any church military power, it's going to be abused. Did Jesus ever compel people to follow him? When he said to somebody, you know, follow me. And if you don't, we're going to get the police after you. Or we're going to get the soldiers after you. We're going to torture you until you believe like I tell you to. Is that how Christ operated? Did he tell the church to operate that way? No, but this is what happened. This, these are not God's methods. Revelation 13, it tells us in verse 7, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. It doesn't mean that he gets victory over the saints, but they are pushed underground and this beast power is in prominence. It becomes a successful counterfeit. It is well known fact from history that the church did persecute. The papacy clearly admits doing so. I really admired Pope John Paul II. I don't know if I told you my father met him. Uh, flew to Rome and had an audience with the Pope. And he's a, just a lovely man. And uh, the new Pope, uh, Pope Benedict, might be a lovely individual. We're not speaking about them. We're talking about the positions they hold and the teachings of the movement, the institution, and what they've done historically. But Pope John Paul II, part of the 2000 Jubilee was a public confession for the abuses of the church. But do you know how it's worded? They are very careful how they word things. They worded it that some in our church did some things to persecute, as though the church didn't approve it. And Oh, man, some of the figures range anywhere from 50 to 70 million people from 538 to 1798. Not only Christians, but Jews and others were killed under the name of the church. The British historian William Edward Leakey wrote that the church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind will not be questioned by any Protestant who has a competent knowledge of history.